right. Another Scientology podcast. We're going to take up the subject of exteriorization again. By this time, we're going to have a discussion with a class A auditor and maybe guest minus. We're going to talk about exteriorization again. Kind of ended abruptly and took me by surprise, but uh, <laughs> welcome to the podcast, Scientology podcast. We're talking about exteriorization. We're going to have a little panel discussion. If you uh, saw or go to our uh, YouTube channel or to the Scientology website for under the podcast, you'll see the uh, previous podcast on the subject of exteriorization also known as out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, astral travel. It's been called many things over the millennia. It's a phenomena that's been remarked upon, discussed, talked about, known, and there's lots of ins and outs. And we have a Scientological perspective we're going to continue to bring here. And uh, I'm going to bring up just by way of introduction of who I am talking about. Um, whoops. Okay, flunk for the engineer, the uh, <laughs> the guy who's running this. Who's running this show? Um, this was the one I wanted to bring up. Uh, I wanted to show uh, myself. My name is Dave LaCroix, president of Scientology.org, and my guest I'm going to bring in here in just a second is... Jim Newell. In fact, why don't I do that right now? Jim, you want to join us? Okay. Hello. There he is. Welcome, Jim. Thank you very now, much, Dave. Uh, I uh, I mentioned you're a Class 8 auditor, but maybe you could uh, give us a little a quick little bio, your experience in Scientology, your training, and uh, whatnot. Sure. Well, I've been a in Scientology for a long time, 1971 is when I got in, and um, ah, me came too. A, same year, same year. No here. kidding, I, I yeah, was in in the. I, I came in during the Air Force, and uh, I was in the Air Force, and actually uh, um, got a little diversion where they sent me to uh, Vietnam for a, a year or so, and I, <laughs> so I was actually a Scientologist in Vietnam. I sold books and use assist processes uh, in a war zone and stuff like that. So wow. it was very interesting. And then I uh, got out of the Air Force and uh, and then like in 74 became a class four auditor and then um, and expanded Dianetic Auditor in 74 and five and became a lead auditor at LA Org. And then, um, and then uh, did, you know, several thousand hours of auditing there. And uh, you know, back in the, back in those days, they had all sorts of wild times. Back in the old days, it was a very interesting experience. And then, yeah. uh, then began, then got on the briefing course and and finished that around seventy eight. And now, um, mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to mention because uh, we've got a wide uh, spectrum of people that are going to tune into this and be interested. But we're talking about training uh, in Scientology techniques and methodologies, but people don't have um, an understanding how, how much time and effort and how sophisticated this technology is, I think, in a lot of cases. Because when you just roll that off, well, I did the briefing course, <laughs> or I did class four, you're talking about just up to class four can be, you know, months of training to get an expertise. And if you really, you know, get uh, to a, like a class five auditor, uh, that's a real, you know, sharpshooter, like, uh, technical expertise. The briefing course takes it to this other level. That was, that's like, you know, can be several years worth of study and, uh, drilling, right? There was over, there were several years of briefing course mm -hmm. and, uh, right. And, um, you know, auditing uh, at a, at a major organization like the LA or day, uh, that was like the case cracker organization for the United States. Absolutely. Right. Maybe in many respects, very high level organization. And the briefing course did take several years where you go and literally study everything in all the red volumes, all the technical volumes and about 400 plus tapes and all the drills, all the mm. procedures. 
And uh, so, yeah, this is not a fly-by-night operation. Um, the technology is extremely exact. And, and, and in, you know, the difference between Scientology and everything else is we've got a tr like not one or two little processes, I guess, or whatever. We, you know, we, we've got thousands, thousands yeah. of processes. Yeah. And, um, well, I like to drive that point home because out there, you know, somebody hears about Scientology and of course they go to Google and in 10 minutes, they're an expert on the subject. <laughs> you know? right. And meanwhile, someone like yourself and, and to a degree myself, you know, that spent the years uh, working a job, then getting at night or however you did it, but, you know, speeding through town to get to a course room on time at seven o'clock and doing it three hours and doing that five nights a week and often on weekends and doing this over through many, many different courses and training and getting skills and expertise in different areas having to do with the mind. Um, it's just such a broad and professional, sophisticated subject that people don't appreciate or understand. So. I just like to drive that point home. Maybe I'm overdoing, over, over dramatizing it. But, um, you know, when I talk to a class eight, I have this reality in the back of me. I know, not having done the briefing course, but from other experiences, how many days, weeks, months, years of training and dedication and the work that goes into putting yourself in that position to have done all of that. You know, it's it's immense. And uh, you're right. So and that, that kind of bears or has bearing on this topic today of exteriorization, because when we're talking about it, we're not talking about it from this, you know, well, I saw David Icke uh, or uh, somebody out there, you know, some uh, Maharishi talking about astral projection with a lot of fluffy, airy, fairy things. And I'm not invalidating uh, the fact that they have a perception of what's going on. It's just that this is a very grounded, scientific, uh, professional uh, experience with this subject. So I kind of interrupt you on your story, but after you did the briefing course and then uh, w from there, where did you, when did you do the class eight course? I did the class eight in 89. Uh, for I've been a professional auditor since 74, basically. So, you know, I, I've probably got around 20,000 hours or more under my belt and hundreds and hundreds of uh, people that I've uh, successfully uh, counseled. So, and uh, I was, when I was in the church, I was a, a very successful field auditor. I, 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 that's probably how I escaped most of the uh, the church stuff as I, I was just a field auditor. I didn't have to audit under their, uh, their, I mean, you know, I re actually redid the briefing course under one of their training things called GAT, uh, golden age training number one. <laughs> I and, was uh, going to ask you about that, but I didn't want to like yeah, go off, go off I, on I, too I, much of a tangent on, anyways, we, could have I, we probably will have to, um, yeah, we can have I, another I, whole discussion on uh, tech evolutions and, uh, you we, know. We, we can talk about that. But, yeah, I forced myself to do it, frankly hated uh, the GAT stuff, but did it because I, I always was uh, dedicated to this subject of freeing spiritual beings. Uh, it's I guess it's my purpose, you know. And... Um, so anyways, I, 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 be, I did become a class eight in, in the late 80s, 90s, became a permanent class eight in uh, uh, 90, 1990. And, uh, that, and that basically included where you had, you know, I did this at the advanced organization. So it was auditing a lot of the upper level people, uh, the OTs. And, mm -hmm. um, and I did it in the, um, what they call the notch unit and stuff. The new era Dianetic um, for OTs uh, unit. Right. So I, I've got a lot of experience on this exteriorization stuff. In fact, it's like right. it's like uh, it's like water off a duck. Of course, uh, people go exterior. <laughs> right. I know. It's um, when I started to tackle this subject, uh, I was kind of surprised at how difficult it was to kind of put the thoughts together in what sequence and what to explain when you're talking about a lot of people coming at it from 
brand new, never heard of Scientology. Maybe they hear, you know, because I put stuff out on Twitter. So, you know, I'm catching some people that are, <laughs> you know, uh, or they've heard all the negative yak, yak, yak about the church. Um, but even without all that, just breaking it down into segments or to make it somewhat understandable, um, you know, it was more of a challenge than you'd think because to you and I, you know, people that have been dealing with this are, you know, now what, 45 years or 46 years, you know, it's not a new topic, but uh, to a lot of people, it's like, what, huh? You, you actually believe that, you know, or uh, you guys have some skills and you, uh, you know, like even just breaking down the, uh, the auditing remedies, which we can talk about in a minute, but um, uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, well, you know, it's been on this planet for a long time. Well, the funny thing too, I mean, like, entire religions are. Sorry, I, I, we're cutting off each other a little bit here. <laughs> well, you know, like, re, 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 like entire religions are often based on exteriorization, like, uh, the Islam religion is so big into uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, in Jerusalem is that Muhammad had an out-of-body experience and went to the uh, to the um, uh, that 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 Solomon's castle and was supposed to have met up with several other beings there, including like Jesus and stuff like this. So I mean, this is this this is why they are so into wanting uh, Jerusalem. Also, I mean, it's like this exteriorization is is a, a primary mover on this planet, and one should recognize it. Scientology did the, the very nice thing of explaining what gets exteriorized, and it happens to be you get leave the body. It isn't like your soul; it's just you that leaves the body. So it, right. th this was this is probably one of the primary. You know, people could make fun of that but they're making fun that they have no reality on themselves as a spiritual being. Right. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of the, um, you know, when you've mucked around with this subject enough, you and gone up uh, the bridge in Scientology enough and been exterior enough, you realize that the natural state, I mean, the odd thing is really the, the weird thing is that people are not exterior. Uh, and the unfortunate thing <laughs> is that they're not. Um, and the whole history, the cosmology of the universe is sort of tied into this subject as well. I mean, uh, the idea that you have uh, beings that are not uh, tethered to a physical body uh, has upset some people. And it upsets people today, a certain type of person out there in the world who don't want you know, people to be that free because we're talking about freedom. So uh, it's kind of almost the, the end result of all of Scientology is that people are exterior. Uh, would you agree with that statement? Absolutely. Well, you know, in the old uh, days of Scientology, when I believe it was more uh, on purpose, is the, the entire uh, purpose was to uh, create total freedom for the spiritual being. Now, I think the total purpose of Scientology is to make big buildings or something like that. They lost yeah. their purpose. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and, but it, it does produce this. It, you can attain total freedom as a spiritual being. I, I have, at my level of, of, of case, uh, where I'm at as a, as a spirit is, yes, I can do all, a lot of this stuff. And it is total freedom. Yeah. Yeah, the um, back going back to you know when we both got in in 1971, uh, coincidentally, I guess um, it was a good year. During, it was a good year, yeah. Um, but uh, not only were the orgs far more spiritual, but the people coming in and the people getting interested, it was um, you know you had Dianetics, which kind of a, it's very valid subject and it appeals to people you know people that are in grief or have physical pains and there's a lot of this sort of like body oriented things that it addresses and helps extricate the spirit from but the 
bigger majority, at least back then, uh, were attracted to Scientology based on these kind of ideas of exteriorization and spiritual quest and spiritual uh, enlightenment. And um, so that's why I'm doing, by the way, why I started doing this podcast is because I'm tapping into that idea and I'm reaching out to that whole, um, you know, band of beings that are out there. They may be never even heard of Scientology, but, or if they have, they've got it wrong. They've got it in a negative light as far as the subject goes, but yet they're very tuned into spiritual things. They're into, you know, uh, putting out messages of love, of spiritual concepts of, and we should be aligned with those people because we're very much, not only are we doing the same thing, we're, we should be the leaders. Uh, you know, we should be, talking about it to the Maharishis or the, you know, the gurus and so forth and uh, helping them maybe understand the phenomena a little better. Well, you're absolutely right. I, I have talked to some of these individuals. I, I remember when I was in the Air Force, I uh, talked to a Buddhist monk who had been sitting on a mountaintop for three, three or four months. And uh, we we'd had talks about that. I was a new Scientologist at the time. But um, I had already run other lifetimes. Um, Scientology is so fast. You 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 can you can you can you can attain stuff that people sit on mountains for for years that, that haven't attained. You can get this kind of stuff in a few, few weeks. Uh, <laughs> I I made the joke and, in, the, in my in the last one. I said, well, you know, I'd go do that, but I like pizza, so I don't I don't think that would work for me. You know, I'd you're rather right. Get, I'd rather get my spiritual enlightenment where I can also watch a football game once in a while, maybe, you know. The the, the funny thing about this guy is, here, I'm fighting wars. He's been sitting on a mountaintop for four months, and I'm a more uptone than he is. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was an interesting observation for my observation. Yeah. I was also more aware than he was. I, I mean, you, you can, you can kind of know these kind of things, you know, who you're talking to. And yeah. uh, it was it was a fascinating uh, observation for being a relatively new Scientologist that, wow, I have a heck of a heck of a uh, knowingness uh, technology here. Quite fascinating. It's yeah. um, anyways, uh, we, we, the, the point is, which and, and also in some of your other pod, fantastic podcasts on uh, unlike the remote viewer people that you've done. Um, I mean, basically, they did rip off a lot of our technology back there in the 70s, because uh, maybe even earlier, the because uh, Hubbard has been doing this stuff since the 50s. And that right. nobody talks that all, a lot of these processes that we have to put people out of their body was done around 51, 52, 53, 54. I mean, this this is this is. We were so far ahead of the curve that now in, in 2020 or 2017, 20, whatever, you know, it's like it's almost the, the communication lag is off. So now people can can um, uh, understand that, that literally Hubbard was 70, 60 years ahead of the game, basically. Yeah. Well, the remote viewing podcast, I did that series. That was a tough uh, topic to tackle also. But yeah, it's very much related and anybody listening to this, you should. I encourage you to listen to all three of those podcasts to get sort of a a broad grasp of uh, that topic. Because um, what are you talking about when you say remote viewing, other than exteriorization? You know, uh, and those guys that started that whole program, a lot of people don't know they were Scientology OTs. They had, uh, you know, been firmly grounded in LRH's discoveries and thinking on the subject and they'd received a lot of processing uh in fact Ingo swan credited several times publicly in writing uh his auditing and not just doing the ot levels but all of his auditing to his ability to have the perceptions and the um you know the certainty about what he was looking at that he did have and uh so yeah, it's very much related. And that was back there in those 70s. You know, there we go to the 70s again. Um, but remote viewing, there's a bunch of phenomena. Uh, let me just maybe this will sort of stimulate a little bit of uh, 
um, what we um, uh, what we might want to bring up. I'm going to move this along to. Um, we sort of touched on uh, this. But we're going. To, I'm just bringing these up for your sake, Jim. Are some of the questions we might want to try to answer? Um, some of that I've I made a stab at defining in the uh, earlier podcast, uh, like what is it, you know? And um, I played an L. Ron Hubbard uh, description of it. Um, he talks about it in that podcast. Um, but, um, well, you want to listen to that L. Ron Hubbard uh, description of exteriorization? Should we do that? Sure, we can, we can uh, put our evaluation on what Hubbard said on this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, all right, so this is what Except Ron has to say. It's acceptable. <laughs> all right. But the phenomena of exteriorization takes place rather easily today in Scientology. We fought for this, hired in 1952. There have been numerous methods of exteriorizing people, and all of them, because they are directly addressed to exteriorization, have definite liabilities, and exteriorization is not a stable fact. Exteriorization is the phenomenon of being in a position or space dependent upon only one's consideration able to view from that space the body and the room as it is. That is exteriorization. One can view the body or control the body from a distance. Right. So Yeah, I think he defined it extremely well. I have only one little comment I'd say is it's like it, it isn't just the body or the room. You You can view uh, the entire universe, and 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 that's, and 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 exteriorization. I, I got a, a my own viewpoint of this, and it's, yeah, you can you can leave the body. It's a little bit like a library. You walk in a library, and uh, now you've got to select and and decide. Well, what book are you going to open up to get the data on? Yeah, and so the. The, basically, the subject matter of, and that includes like the universe. What what part of the of um, uh, of life, past or even future, are you going to put your attention on, on with which to perceive, confront, and evaluate um, your perceptions on? And that is, this opens up the entire um, gamut of the of uh, of the Thetan, the spiritual beings' abilities. Right. And that may take, it takes discipline for sure. It takes that ability to hold positions. Uh, it, it, and this is where auditing itself comes in handy because, you know, they talk a lot about Scientology being a um, mind control cult. The, uh, I guess, the opposition type people that think only being a body is the correct normalcy. But you you re got to recognize you do need discipline, self discipline on with on which that you can uh, here you're you're gonna you're not just gonna be a body you're gonna actually be a spiritual being instead of a body. Yes, you better have some discipline on where you're where what points of view are you uh, looking at, and can you hold a position on that, and can you uh, without like running in fear uh, confront this kind of stuff. And this is where being a trained um, person. And, 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 and a good auditor, which surprisingly is not done at all in the church today, but there are drills to actually help you. Uh, you you'd actually need a little bit of drilling and training on this stuff. The first bit would be to let, get you out of the body. Then, then the second step would be to train you. Then what? What do you do once you're out? Right. Well, and, you know, it, it touches on also... Um, the whole thing with auditing is, um, well, up to, uh, through most of what we call the bridge, it's taking stuff away that is unnecessary, appended to the Thetan. And as you do that, 
there's a uh, greater and great, ever increasing reality and perception increases as you go. So this exteriorization thing isn't like a, you know, a light switch on or off. It's many, 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 many thousands, even probably millions of degrees of increasingly better and better perception and greater and greater, you could say, size or breadth or scope. And that is a result of auditing. It um, You can exteriorize somebody off the street, possibly, or the... You know, a guy could go sit on a mountain for 25 years and probably get a certain degree of exteriorization that he could enjoy until he came down off the mountain and got in traffic on the, you know, 405 freeway or something, you know, <laughs> he, he might not be quite so serene once he uh, interacted with humans again. But through Scientology, you have this, it's a process, the processes, each one, as you go up the grades and the steps of the ladder, one is increasingly eliminating the barriers that keep you from exteriorizing. And of course, people go exterior. And we're going to talk about in auditing how remedies and why we have to do certain remedies in auditing. But um, so it's a it's a kind of a double edged sword. Yeah, we want to be exterior, but, you know, there's a price. It's It's got a price. And that is you dedicating yourself to um, doing that those drills that you're talking about. Yeah. Well, Hubbard was a, a wise man. He, he, back in the fifties, since he did have his history of studying the occult and mysticism and everything else, because he was a philosopher, he was interested and he was trying to codify some of this stuff instead of blindly, uh, you know, pray to the great God Ra or something like that, you know? So he wanted, he, he knew there was something there, but he also recognized a lot of these people will get wacky. So it, what would be nice is to be able to have um, an exterior spirit with ethics uh, that didn't need to go off and do um, weird, uh, strange dramatizations. And, that, and, and this has been part of the problem of, um, uh, of an OT, an operating Thetan, is that, frankly, they hadn't, they've had, they could do certain things, and we've had people throughout I'm sure Jesus was a um, uh, an operating Thetan. I'm sure probably Muhammad was an operating Thetan. Buddha was an operating Thetan. These people uh, uh, could create effects and influence people. But Hubbard recognized that if just to get you out of the body, you better have your what you'd call case, the way you respond to the um, the environment, uh, the way um, you better get that handled. And, and this is where the, the science of Dianetics comes in handy is because it gets rid of a lot of these aberrative uh, incidents, which literally can uh, throw you out of present time and make you do irrational things. So, right. so Re Hubbard recognized he could throw you out of the body, but you, 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 people would often come back in and uh, it's because they didn't have their case handled. So this is the bridge, is you get your case handled so that ultimately you can be free, totally free as a spiritual being. And, and the other little factor is it is a bit like an onion peel. You peel off one onion layer, you feel fantastic, and there happens to be another onion peel just beyond that. And you got, they got to confront that. It's a big, it's a, a lot of aberration that has to be handled because we've been around a long time as immortal spiritual beings. Yeah, word, as they say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a lot uh, that, that's, a handle. That's the other thing. He found out we're immortal spiritual beings. I mean, that's a big deal. It, 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 this, these are like major, you know, people can make fun of Scientology, but some of the, he, he clearly, concisely defined these. He defined what is, a, he defined a spiritual being. Yeah, which would be like static. If anybody Life wants static. to do a little bit of a, a, a research project, which we could have a whole another talk just about the what we call axiom one, axiom one and two. Uh, but he defines, like you just mentioned, a static and what the spiritual being is in very precise um, sort of uh, scientific terms, which 
is unprecedented. You know, I mean, it's just mind blowing that he was able to do that. Uh, when you dive into what that definition is, we're not going to bring it up here, but it's available in the book. Uh, well, we have it on Scientology. The book Oak is called O Eight or the letter Zero Eight. Scientology 08, and um, the axioms are in there. Anybody can look it up. Maybe I'll put a link to it at the end of this uh, podcast. Um, by the way, I should interject too. At the end here, we can uh, we'll we'll maybe give some uh, exteriorization processes for people, uh, like I did on the other podcast on exteriorization. So, um, you know, there's like. I said, there's so many facets to this and questions that people have. Let me just uh, bring that where we were. Um, so, you know, what is it? It's well, it's outside of being outside of your body as uh, L. Ron Hubbard uh, described there. Um, people ask themselves like, um, well, can you see through things? Well, <laughs> that's an easy one. Um, Yes, but to what degree? Uh, perceptics are, there's what, 52 perceptics? Well, there's uh, more than that. But I think in, even in, in the basic book, there's 56. 56. Um, but, but there's even more than that. I, I've spotted a few uh, extra okay. ones. But, you, I mean, it's, you see, I, one nice thing about being in the free zone uh, is that you, uh, you can look and you, you can be your own researcher on this kind of stuff. It's like, it's like Hubbard did the hard stuff. He blazed the trail and uh, it's okay if you spot an extra perceptic or two, it's yeah. valid for you anyways. Yeah. And, 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 and my point was just that there's, um, you know, people say, well, I'm, I, how do they know if they're exterior? And a lot of people have been exterior and they didn't know it or they wouldn't call it that or they wouldn't, <laughs> recognize it as that because they might have perception like the mother might have the perception that the baby's upset upstairs and not based on any empirical observation but she's perceived it she's got her perception out and people do that all the time while driving while operating thing equipment by playing sports um i i would do it uh, when as a kid playing basketball, I would, I noticed I pretty much had 360 degree perception. Like if somebody was guarding me or behind me and whatnot, and I developed it so that I was perceiving all around me without the eyes. So uh, it's a many, many uh, different layers and many different faceted uh, thing about your uh, perceptions as a being outside of the body. I, I think that, um, Probably the biggest thing regarding um, exteriorization is that you don't go around invalidating or even evaluating, uh, you know, deciding that, oh, I couldn't be this, uh, you know, it's crazy, invalidation. Um, oh, I, I really didn't perceive that uh, invalidation or evaluation. It's like it, it, when, when, it, when you can stop that kind of stuff, which is often your case, uh, or, or you know, you're, you're you just you simply are uh, afraid to uh, experience and be yourself. Uh, and and when you can get around that, your exteriorizations are much simpler. It's like, of course, it's not hard to uh, perceive something um, like you say in your room while you and I are talking. It's just a matter of deciding that, yeah, I'm in I'm in that space with you right now. It's like. Right. Um, and, and it's like, it's almost that simple. And is it, but is it, and also there's also this other factor of thinking that the uh, physical universe is senior to your own perception. Because you may not view things exactly the way uh, it is in the physical universe that like bodies are seeing. And because the truth of the matter, matter is as spiritual beings we are more in the spiritual universe but we happen to be occupying ourselves in the physical universe and uh, that doesn't mean we're we're part of the physical universe so these are like high level concepts um but it, it happens to actually explain a lot of the phenomena including uh like that phenomena of ghosts and things like that i mean yeah. uh, obviously there's no lack of um uh, observed uh, spiritual phenomena, haunted houses and stuff. I mean, it's 
I mean, I mean, they they even get um, infrared pictures of these uh, entities. I guess you'd call them. They're they're yeah. they're, they're spirits stuck in locations. That's all a ghost is, basically, or on a, on a, on a point in time. This is one of the things that uh, Scientology sort of handles. I mean, it's can make fun of it, but it happens to be observable. I mean, there's no lack of. I, I, I mean, you might have to find a few people that are, are saying, I don't believe in ghosts, but I mean, there's enough movies about it. I think probably people believe in them now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and you reminded me just a second ago, because I was, I don't remember what I was, I was watching some documentary and they touched on the subject of uh, quantum, you know, uh, experiments or quantum theory on things and the notion that the physical universe is, you know, uh, composed of atoms and there's a lot of space between the atoms. And so there's all this, uh, empty space or at least space that's not occupied by an objects. Uh, even when you look at a brick wall or walls and, and physical things. So, uh, the whole, um, there's that whole band of, uh, people that are moving in direction and want to look at things scientifically, but they're from the quantum perspective, they're getting closer and closer to trying to, you know, come up with axiom one, basically <laughs> they're trying to come up with this definition of what is a static, what is a, a spiritual being and uh, what, what is, you know, cr what has created all of this physical stuff that uh, we're talking about or that we run into and deal with daily. It's a little bit off the exteriorization subject, but it's related because that's where you go once you get out and you start looking at things. You say, well, if I can see through this, if I can do this or that, then where did it come from? And you start, you know, this whole cascade of questions and answers uh, or questions, at least. And then hopefully you find some answers start tumbling out. Well, yeah, excellent. Well, well, good points. I think that's probably why I got in uh, into Scientology is that I I was curious about this kind of phenomenon, this kind of stuff. Um, isn't anyone a little bit curious about life potential and death and all these kind of things? And 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 frankly, if you're an honest observer, uh, Hubbard did an absolutely astounding, methodical job on his research on this stuff. He was a fabulous researcher. Um, you know, maybe somewhere, I mean, yeah, did he have a case? Did he have an ego? Of course, who doesn't? And, uh, you know, he is, he's, a, he's a human. Uh, he always claimed that. He, unlike many, uh, um, I guess, religious leaders, he, he made no claims. Uh, he, he, he was a hard researcher on a lot of this stuff. So, and he did uncover a tremendous amount of phenomena and then he put it, why, why do we call a spirit a Thetan? Is it, you know, it's like people make fun of Thetan. The point is, there was so much time track on the word spirit that he figured he'd try to start fresh on this subject and call Theta, which comes from basically the Greek um, uh, letter of, uh, you know, of, of, of Theta and, and just put a mathematical terminology to kind of separate out on all this stuff. I mean, he had reasons why he created terminology. It right. was to try to start a fresh science on the subject. And uh, I'm, I'm fairly sure that um, uh, big organizations on this planet didn't want um, to have a free religion. And so somewhere along the line, they took over this uh, organization. I mean, well, that's another whole subject matter. It's, <laughs> well, it's you too, know, I was sorry, yeah. but... Uh, Come I was uh, I, I was going to uh, originally have a subtitle for the the podcast on exteriorization. I was going to subtitle it "The Ultimate Disruptive Technology." Uh, you know what a disruptive technologies are like. Uh, you know the internet comes along, and now all of a sudden retail is completely different than it was. You know, the big giant retailers are uh, you know going out of business because the internet has changed that. But there's been a lot of disruptive technologies. Uh, down through history that have changed the way, you know, the world worked. But uh, Scientology or L. Ron Hubbard's discoveries about the spirit and this whole subject of exteriorization, uh, bringing, letting people or giving people a way that they can 
perceive things outside of the physical senses, outside of the physical realm. Uh, without and, drugs. Without drugs. But it's not, yeah. when we, most people think of sight, you know, can you, what can you see? Can you see this or that? They forget about the audio portion and other perceptions. So yeah. uh, l popping people out and giving them uh, the ability to see and or hear or other perceptions is, um, it sounds great to you and I, but there are a certain class of individuals on this planet who do not think that's such a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> they do not like that at all. It is. Uh, they don't threat. like us bust busting up the enslavement paradigm. Right. I mean, it's it's a threat. And Correct. I personally, the reason I did the uh, remote viewing podcast is because, as you know, that was sponsor. It was created by Scientologists, but it was paid for and sponsored by the CIA, basically the deep state. Now. They find out that they get proof, empirical proof of these things and these guys being able to collect data on their own installations, which they did, outside of their control. Well, it doesn't take a genius to suppose what the next actions or next plan of actions would be for that deep state to do with whatever this operation was that was popping people out of their heads and able to collect data that they didn't have, you know, control over. So I don't want to go off on that too much here, but it's definitely a factor in this whole saga that, uh, you know, we, we think of it as a great sport and great fun and what a nice thing to do for people. But there, there might be some people that just don't think they're not quite so enthusiastic about the idea of people getting out of their heads. So. Well, you're right. It's you know, it's intention. You know, uh, an ethic should have the attention, uh, intention to make you as a spiritual being totally free, and and recognizing it is a gradient process. It isn't a one step deal, and um, uh, but it, it is gradient, and um, but it can be attained, and um, and the, these are these are these are abilities that are not just for one lifetime, also. So, you know, when you when you attain certain capabilities and you really know you have this with certainty, this is this is where the, the Scientology is worth its fee is that this stuff is good for the rest of your lifetimes as a spiritual <laughs> being. Right. Now we're getting heavy. We're getting you see you get heavy on this whole exteriorization stuff because it de no. doesn't deal with just the, the meat body. Of course, you can have a better life if you're not aberrated and you're happy and you feel very uptone as far as emotions and and you have a higher capabilities than many in your environment and you don't feel effect. I mean, these are well, what do you what kind of price tag do you put on this kind of stuff? But yeah. on a higher level, we, you know, every you know, death is part of life. Let's face it. And uh so what happens when you um, that old that you, know, you say adios to your uh, your your meat and form? You better have some capabilities here to take. You know, like this is kind of like what we've been training uh, in, in in doing all this auditing for is that will you be stable or are you going to be effect out there without a body? Can can you be rational? Can you be um, or can you be a, a causative spiritual being? Uh, can you decide on where, what body you're going to pick up if you even want to pick up another body? Now, now we're talking really heavy stuff here. Right. And I hope your new people, whoever listen to this, um, uh, you know, say, hey, this guy is far out. But I, I, frankly, doesn't it, seem, <laughs> doesn't it seem just like normal and rational in many respects to even want to take responsibility for what happens when you die? Well, yeah, of course. And, and, you know, like I said, you and I have been on this track for a long time. And, and basically, we all have been. I mean, even people that are have never even heard the term Scientology, they've been on a track, a quest, whether they would put it in those terms now or not. But uh, we've all been on this quest to uh, figure out what's happened, what's going on with the universe, why are we here, who are we, you know, all these sort of questions. And and then, uh, you know, what happens after you die? And uh, what about reincarnation? So 
exteriorization, that topic, it, it leads to a lot of these other things. Um, I've touched on it in like on Scientology. I did an article on uh, indigo children, which is a phenomena that's been noticed. A lot of people outside of Scientology have noticed there's this crop of children that's coming up the line these days or coming into existence that are uh, either empathic or, you know, they're very, they're sensitives. They describe them by different ways, but basically uh, they haven't been, uh, they're, they're a new breed, you could say, of being, which we, again, another whole podcast just on that, what happened and why and why we're seeing that. But it's a phenomena that's related to, you know, if you take the logic of that, you can exteriorize well and you're separate from a body. Okay, that must mean then that when the body dies, you don't. So, you know, uh, that that's what would you call a disruptive technology? That's a dis- that's another reason it's disruptive uh, to the yes. status quo, to the status Correct. quo and to certain vested interests, which uh, also, you know, found L. Ron Hubbard to be a uh, persona non grata <laughs> you know, because he's coming up with these things. Uh, he's talking about past lives. And they don't want to hear about it. That just throws the whole paradigm that they're going by uh, out the window. So Well, not to mention that once you're exterior, you can often uh, do corrective actions and assist the body in, in healing itself. Right. That's another whole aspect of things. Now, you know, um, are you going to totally cure cancer? Uh, you know, these you, one has to recognize you have... These are different universes. You have a spiritual universe, which you can go into as a, as a spirit, as a Thetan. And uh, the body happens to be in the material universe. So it really does depend on your degree of capability of influence. Uh, right. And, and the, this is where you have to get what you'd call your power up. This is, uh, and, and what is getting your power up is basically changing your considerations around to where you think you can do something about something. Right. How's that for an, a up. definition of ability? Well, it brings up a number of things. Um, I'm just, I got a couple of slides here. Um, uh, one is some of the misconceptions and you just touched on it. You know, you should be able to, you know, be able to read the other guy's cards uh, if you're exterior or, uh, you know, you should. Can have you do two vid- things at once? Can, can you, can you play a good hand of cards and view another guy's cards at the same time? That might take a lot of drilling. Yeah, <laughs> so, I bet a but, good card player might be able to do that. But <laughs> where, it, where, where it gets easily invalidated is uh, people take that leap, you know, like uh, they make fun of, let's say, the guys out there that are making fun of Scientology OTs. Uh, they say, well, they can't knock a hat off at 50 feet or whatever, you know, or they can't do this or they can't do that or nobody's ever... Uh, levitated anything and you know they take this leap it's either uh, you, you know one or the other or you know if if OT were real you'd be able to uh, levitate yourself uh, you know down the street well yeah well you know totally according illogical. to many observ- uh, observers uh, the Tibetan uh, monks that like be on these mountains for 30 40 years uh, can get the body uh, up but I'm a busy guy. I ain't got time to sit around eight hours a day doing this kind of stuff. The, uh, it, it, you, you, um, you know, it, 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 most Western people have to make a living, uh, not sit on a mountaintop. And, and frankly, then what's the uh, end purpose of, you know, levitating the body six inches off the ground? Well, I guess it's not as cold to sit on the hard stone when you're in your loincloth, I suppose. You know, um, <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> maybe that's why they do that. <laughs> it's, it, 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 well, you it's see, also, but, yeah. Sorry. I was just going to say, there, there's there, also it, potentialities uh, are different from, you know, uh, the gradient steps up to those potentialities. Like we're talking about exteriorization right. as if, you know, it's an everyday thing, whereas a lot of people are sitting out there possibly listening to this and when they close their eyes all they see is black 
you know, they are, right. uh, I defined it in the previous, but there's, uh, you know, LRH call them the black five, you know, people that don't have perceptions and they're a long, 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 long way from exterior perceptions. Well, you and I might be at certain, some point on this evolutionary scale, but, you know, being able to levitate things might be, uh, you know, who knows where, how many more steps on the, uh, if that, even if that's desirable, but I'm just saying that it doesn't invalidate the whole uh, phenomena because it's out there. People are talking about this. I went into this uh, before, but out-of-body experiences is not a Scientology exclusive topic. I mean, you Google it or go to YouTube. Um, you know, it's just hundreds of thousands, millions of uh, radio shows, writings, blogs, you know, commentary on this phenomena is out there by bazillions. You know, people have been uh, talking about it like crazy. They just don't have the terminology like we do and maybe not uh, the remedy or the solution to how you can take someone from, you know, absolutely no or little experience with the subject and take them up through these Scientology processing grades and have them really experience exteriorization for real. So, um, let me, uh, let's see what we got next up. Um, we're touching on a lot of stuff here and we're making good progress. I wanted to just see if we have a um, couple of misnomers. Well, I kind of, just touched on it, you know, the idea that levitation and telekinesis and these superpowers, you know, I find it fascinating this day, you know, the, the uh, movies and TV shows are just loaded with superpower and superheroes, <laughs> you, ever, you know, and so there's this like huge interest in uh, really what you can almost call spiritual uh, abilities, you know, the the kids that all go to the school and they have separate powers, mind powers and whatnot, or uh, just guys with that can do various things and fly and Spider-Man or whatnot. There's a lot of fascination with extraordinary or extra normal capabilities, you know. Right. And, uh, well, you know, it, 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 it reminds you of what maybe you once were as a spiritual being. We have been around a long, long time. And, uh, and um, you know, we are immortal. And, uh, and so we had capabilities, but as we, I guess, coexisted in this universe for a long, long time, we, now we can only think we're just um, a meat body here that uh, has to um, go to school. Um, and, and, and the only thing you learn in school is the only correct thing. Everything else is wrong. So we, we've been pretty well brainwashed as, as uh, spiritual beings. And there has been a, now you get into a whole other thing is that this has, this, they didn't want uh, beings that were real powerful. And uh, they wanted beings just as be bodies and, and kind of weak. At least somebody did. And it even appears the government of today wants this kind of stuff. Right. And Slave so, drones. Yeah. I mean, look at the, look at China. I mean, uh, they, they'd like a billion people um, as slave workers uh, so that they can work um, 18 hours a day and uh, build um, iPhones. And, uh, and, and, and they even put uh, suicide nets around the uh, building. So in there, there, I mean, this is, these are tremendous bad deeds, or I guess we, our word is called overts. But, you know, it's like, um, uh, you know, it's like these are the kind of things that, why they don't like us talking about exteriorization is because when you when you do kind of like get out of this identity of just being a body, recognizing you do have capabilities, you are allowed to perceive, you are allowed to evaluate your data for yourself. You don't need a teacher telling you how to evaluate data. You should be able to evaluate what is correct or important for yourself. And, and these, are, these are skills that a good Scientologist should know. And um, once upon a 
upon a time we taught this kind of stuff in Scientology. Now everything is not being taught. This is why it's pretty, pretty, I'm fairly sure that um, the organization was taken over by some government entity or deep state or whatever. I mean, but another topic, obviously. But yeah. um, exteriorization, and they don't even emphasize exteriorization very much in the Church of Scientology these days. It's really no, I, kind of funny. Well, and uh, this is going to sound odd, but even in the field outside of the church, because I run a large Facebook group. It's over 600 people. A lot of them are new, but it's a full gamut from trained uh, OTs to, you know, people that have very little auditing, but um, they're all Scientologists. And boy, I bring up something uh, like even exteriorization, very little comment about it. It's like going, wow, you know, they've been so sucked into the whole you know, watching the former Sea Org members yak about how awful the church is. And they're so tied up in knots to, to such a large degree with um, that, all that kind of controversy and stuff that uh, even bringing up the idea of, um, you know, telepathy or exteriorization or past lives or, I mean, they might be alluded to a little bit, but it's not the same environment that you and I lived in in the seventies, where it was kind of like commonplace to read an advanced magazine and hear stories about people doing all kinds of wonderful things, you know, having yeah. miraculous things happen in their life or, uh, so that's another reason I'm trying to revive it a little bit, give it a little bit of a kickstart with, uh, bringing up this topic in a podcast format. Well, I so. congratulate you, and I'm uh, I'm glad you helped invited me to even uh, participate because I have a my interest is might be even stronger than it was in the beginning because now not only am I, I I'm actually attaining a lot of this stuff and I can help others attain this stuff and uh, and and I'm sure you can too and it, it's absolutely uh, the joy this is what this is what all this hard work uh, came about. I mean, we, we, we studied years and years so that we could actually do this kind of stuff. And uh, right. the, it's wonderful. The carrot, the, the carrot was always uh, exteriorization and getting uh, free of the body. I mean, that was, yeah, it's fine to know, to look up words, to, to how to use a dictionary, uh, how to run an engram so that, you know, the pain in the zorch is no longer bothering the guy. <laughs> And that's miraculous stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. But the carrot at the end of where the road was leading was always, you know, uh, this higher, uh, to a large extent, you know, what I've, I feel like I've achieved now as a result of all these years of, of effort. But yes. um, it, that, that's what, you know, that's what it's all about. It's not about uh, buildings or carpeting, how many yards of carpeting or how many boats or how much, you know, uh, watching a seminar or somebody talk or whatever. It's, um, you know, that's why I, I, I like to always keep that as the high, you know, think high, look high, you know, go f shoot for the moon, you know, and if you're not quite there, okay, but, you know, at least you're you're going for it. Yeah, like when, like you, know, an interesting point. Exactly what you said there. But whenever Scientology in the old days would get attacked, Hubbard would say, "Well, push total freedom," and um, you know, have that intention, and and the attack will go away, and it would. Now uh, the uh, now I think the church just says, Get, "Hire the best lawyer that you can," and. Uh, Sue them for uh, copyright infringement or, uh, or, um, or, or some jazz like that. They, they have lost the purpose of what, you know, Hubbard was, re what, what we're going for. In fact, my wife had an interesting viewpoint that, that you, there's, there's a thing in Scientology called the administrative scale where it goes goals, purposes, policy plans, and then it goes all the way down to statistics. So, you know, I, what happened is they put statistic as the highest importance and they put goal as the lowest importance. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's like, you know, these are, that's my opinion. That's, uh, you know, if you look at it, it's probably one of the things that happened. They, um, in, 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 
OTs that uh, no longer uh, get a little bit of thrill about exteriorization, well, they've they've just bought in um, to the, um, they've had too many losses. Or maybe they, they, they you know, I, you know, my theory on some of these characters is that maybe when they got their auditing in the Sea Org, they were either tired or hungry or they were forced to get the auditing because, uh, or they had big problems in getting back on post because this is what uh, the real true intention was. And, and you do have to take the responsibility of enhancing yourself and the time and the effort. It isn't a one-shot deal. It, there's work to do here. You have to take responsibility for yourself as a spiritual being, and the rewards are extremely high. I mean, uh, feeling great. Uh, it, it's like returning yourself to a, 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 a powerful, stable, spiritual state. I don't know what is a better goal to have. Can you really think of one? No. That's, uh, yeah. that's, that's like I say, the carrot for me uh, has always me been you know, that kind of a state. Um, well, it's all done on gradient scales. It isn't one-shot deal. It, it, that's where uh, that's where all these naysayers. Hey, can you can you lift up a car? Well, no, I can't. Uh, with a jack, I can. Uh, but uh, yeah, there. That's a great picture. Sure. When you have a dream, it's quite possible you're doing stuff like that. Yeah, I talked about that in the previous episode or my presentation of uh, a lot of people when they dream. Um, so-called quote unquote dreams are a mashup a lot of times of exteriorization and then maybe some mental image pictures come in uh some case correct. some uh have you ever had a that... dream where you're going over like a hill and you're smelling the flowers and yeah you're most likely out of the body yeah sleeping right there well up through my having... up, up until i was uh, into my adult life and even you know not that long ago if somebody would ask me if i could have fly if i'd have thought about it i would have said yes i can and i would be like because i used to as a kid uh even without sleeping but at night or sleeping i would i would fly it literally and a lot of that's how a lot of people describe it uh you know their exteriorization experience is flying and uh you know they they'll the little kid will say mommy mommy i was i can fly you know <laughs> and if, if oh lucky, no you can't <laughs> well, hopefully he's no. got a good mom who doesn't do that. Well, but uh, This is where exteriorization gets invalidated. People invalidate. No, you can't. You're crazy. You're, uh, you're, you're, uh, you know, this is insane. Uh, I better take you to the shrink. You know, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is why they're called shrinks. They want you to, they don't want you to expand. They want you to shrink. <laughs> I mean, that's my own little uh, funny one on that, but uh, it makes good sense to me. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, a good Scientology auditor wants to expand you as a spiritual being. A bad Scientology auditor, I don't know. I guess they're 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 they 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 Q and A and they don't let you attain your full uh, end phenomena. And there are you know like out here in the free zone, I found it's like the good, the bad, and the ugly. To be quite honest, it's uh, there's good ones and there's uh, there's bad ones and there's probably ugly ones. But the good ones are the ones that recognize that there is higher things to uh, attain and, and, and try to do it in a standard way. And, and Hubbard did work hard to uh, achieve a standard method. And uh, then you got to throw in the, the intention. The intention is, uh, uh, you know, Scientology is best done with a light intention, not this heavy, heavy thing. Um, that's another thing where the, the church has sort of went bad. And it should be rather affordable. So that you, uh, you know, you don't have to like sell the kids to, uh, you know, have a good exteriorization moment and stuff like that. So, you know, th these are my viewpoints. Yeah, Maybe not no, yours. No, no, they're good points. And, uh, you know, it's easy to uh, go off on to a lot of these other things, uh, which we should have a follow up um, discussion, like just on the technology in and out of the church is one that, uh, you know. <laughs> we could have a panel on that one and, and bring in some That'd other people. That'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be fun. Uh, but um, in, uh, one other thing I want to touch on is um, in auditing, you know, people go exterior. And then, of course, 
sometimes you have to do a little bit of repair. And I went into that into the other podcasts where you, when we say repair, meaning the person can run into some phenomena um, that um, makes it so that they can't really go exterior and auditing without it uh, needing to be addressed and trying to dodge around all the technical discussion of that. But um, the point I tried to make was that it doesn't, it's not a condemnation of auditing that somebody, let's say, would uh, get a session, they go exterior, and then they the next day they'd have a headache or something of that sort. Uh, the fact is, those factors that could come in are potential. They're, they're lurking there before the person ever became a Scientologist, even before they ever got any auditing. Those factors were there would to stop them from being able to go exterior. All the auditing rundown does is eliminate that as a barrier. Is that a pretty good uh, summary uh, in your estimation of what happened? Yeah, ex excellent summary. You, you, there is case. There are cases basically that uh, accumulated um, aberration, uh, a charge that makes you respond in certain ways. And, um, and basically there is case, and, and maybe that's why people are even scared of the subject of talking about leaving bodies because they, they get maybe afraid. Or what happens if I leave it and I, I, I the body dies? You know, it, I suppose that has happened. I don't know. It obviously happens at death. It happens under uh, operation sometimes. And uh, normally you always keep a connection line. So um, that it doesn't occur that often where you just, you know, go off and leave the body and... Uh, <laughs> But uh, but I'm sure it has happened. So the, where did uh, I put that thing? Where did I leave that thing? Uh, oh yeah, there yeah. it is. So and and, and the, 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 not only that is things have like this have happened in the past. So these are the kind of phenomena that it, it isn't a simplistic action. This is where you do actually need a trained professional. It is uh, you know it's like. There's no lack of organizations that probably can get people out of their body. But so what happens when something goes wrong? Can they handle this? I don't know about them, but I know we can. This was this is where Hubbard spent the time. He he recognized that just because you left the body didn't mean you handled all the case. And this is he, he found it was better to handle the case first before you try to start dealing with the upper level exteriorization. Uh, things well, and it, it, and it makes it more stable and that's why you know none of the auditing of the the quote-unquote bridge the standard auditing that's taken all the way up even through the through the the current ot levels uh don't address they're not a direct directly designed to exteriorize someone none of them they it sort of happens as a byproduct it happens very it can happen on any auditing uh, exteriorization could happen on any oddity. I mean, there's right. specific processes that uh, can get you out of the body uh, if you do it long enough, but it can happen on any good session. Right. Well, and my theory is, now this is not standard tech or L LRH, but every end phenomena, what we call an end phenomena of an auditing session where you have the person feels good about it, there's certain needle phenomena where everything's nice, nice and smooth, they're happy, uh, they had some sort of realization as a result of what you're running. To me, that's, uh, you can almost call it a micro exteriorization has occurred there as well. The person has let go, got a little more space, a little bit broader perspective on something in that corner of his own universe. He's seeing things that he never saw before. He's exterior from that to some degree. Now, it's not listed as the standard end phenomena of an auditing processes, but from my perspective now, that's in effect what's occurring all along the way the, from the most beginning processes all the way up. You're getting these little ping, 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 these little <laughs> releases of uh, a greater uh, degree of a bigness, you could say, or something like that. I, I, I that's, think that's my theory. Yeah. I think it's an excellent observation. You see, 
we are already exterior as beings. Uh, you know, Hubbard in the early, um, uh, one of his early books likened a thumb as the, um, as the, as the Thetan, as the spirit, and a sliver is a sliver in the thumb, and that's the body. <laughs> now, the, uh, except all the considerations are, as a spirit, is that you're the sliver. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you, there are, in, 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 but who made these considerations? And it is the spirit that made these considerations that he is the sliver. And he, and so he's got a lot of considerations about being trapped. He's trapped himself. Others have helped trap him. And so we're basically. And he's trapped around, others. And he's, tra you see, it's on all flows. And this that's is. The, that's the killer. He, that part of it right there is that he's trapped well, others. <laughs> in other words, welcome to planet Earth and the physical universe as a spiritual being on planet Earth at this time. And we've yeah. got the technology and it, it has to be done in, in, in increments. You know, it'd be great if we had a, like the one shot, hey, we got the sliver out all just like that. Now, you can take the sliver out, but all the, all the, all the considerations that he hasn't viewed often. The sliver uh -huh. goes back in the thumb again, even deeper sometimes. Might want to repeat it's, that because you're, you're cutting out a little bit. I don't know if we're oh, getting a lapse oh, in the connection okay. or what. So. You, you can get the sliver out, which is basically the, the, the you, you, can, well, you basically get the sliver out of the thumb and then you, you recognize you are an exterior thetan, but the sliver can go back in the thumb because you haven't handled all the considerations, all the case around this phenomenon. And that's basically what auditing in the bridge is. And, 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 that, and that's probably maybe where people consider, hey, this is, this is like not, you know, this is like a funny, you know, this isn't really true because I, I felt I was out once, but now I'm never out anymore. The point is more case just moved in. This eventually can get handled. Probably uh, it, it, it should get handled on the upper OT levels. That's what I've experienced. Yeah. Well, myself too. And, uh, you know, obviously, if uh, L. Ron Hubbard, you know, had it in 52, he had all these processes in 1952 for exteriorizing. But he, uh, I wouldn't say abandoned that, but uh, he realized there was a lot of things that move in or need to be addressed in order for somebody to be a stably exterior and, and, and you know, know that and have, the, you know, the ethics and the responsibility and the, the case factors removed and all these things. So it's a... It's not a simple, um, you know, uh, subject to tackle. Um, it, you know, I, going free. Well, well, why do you think we've been trapped so long? Is because it's a. It, we weren't supposed to get out. I don't think. So well, it, I mean, this is this is how valuable Scientology is. It it actually frees you as a spiritual being, and 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 reestablishes your immortality as a spirit. And you tell me how how many billions is that worth? Um, you know, it, it, it's worth it. It's worth well, the work. Absolutely. And it might uh, be exceed some people's reality to say this, but, you know, that the uh, talking about, you know, how much effort went into trapping us and uh, the, the technology in, to do that uh, is very, very sophisticated. Some very, very, very smart people. Uh, and engineers and technicians using technology way in advance of what exists on this planet have been hey, employed. Just take a look at the poor, the kids. I don't know. You ever been to a restaurant and you look around the restaurant and the parents and the kids and where are the kids? They're in their little box. They're in their little video phone. These kids are being trapped in these electronic devices. I mean, this is done right currently on planet Earth. And yeah, you're right. It has been done with very sophisticated technology on the time track, but it's being done right now. Of course, the good news, too, is it's also being undone right now. That's true. <laughs> I, I, I suppose a few of us are doing that. Um, yeah, that yeah you, you're right. One has to look at the positive side. It, it, one wonders, is it a yin and a yang? Is more... 
more beings actually go free? Does the yang, the more entrapment have to occur? I don't know. This gets philosophical. Well, we've all got our own realities and explorations, and that's part of the uh, the quest. And that's probably outside the scope of this conversation. But probably uh, I'm pushing the, <laughs> the parameters a little. Hey, but anyway, we're having we're having fun. I think we should probably uh, wrap up. It's been one thing is for sure. This topic um, is not going to bore, and uh, we'll probably have to have another uh, conversation or a follow up. I. I I was naive to think that in one, I do one podcast on this topic and that would be it. But yeah, um, maybe Anthony would like to have a, a communication. Yeah. We uh, uh, have a, one guest here who um, has uh, just a little story that he'd like to tell us about his experience. We've all had got our experiences with exteriorization, but Anthony, are you there where you can turn on your McConnell's microphone and, Maybe he yeah, is, he's got uh, the mic on. Now put yeah. the video on. <laughs> there he is. There, there he is. Anthony Phillips from Denmark is joining us now. How are yeah. you doing, Anthony? Okay. Um, I, I, it's getting a bit late, but uh, I'll tell you this rather quickly. This happened in 1956. Um, I ha I'm quite... Yeah, when I was on course, the last this was the HPA course. The last um, week, the last month, I was twinning with Pamela Kemp, who was Ray Kemp, who became Ray Kemp's uh, wife. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I got a session from Ray Kemp. I got an intensive, and um, Ray Kemp. Ray Kemp had worked in the USA with Ron on exteriorization processes. So he had a, he had a handful of them. And uh, I went into a session and uh, <clears throat> he tried two or three or four of them. And he dropped them after about, well, a few commands. I don't, I don't quite remember how much. And I can't remember what he ran. But he he chose he he then came to one of them, and I had to shut my eyes and uh, say to my body, "Hello X," and just repeat saying to my body, "Hello X." So I sat there, um, repeating to my body, "Hello X." And what happened? I heard my voice, my body's voice, in front of me. Mm -hmm. That was it. Um, <clears throat> he then ended the process, but I was exterior from my body. <laughs> so that's, that's the, and it's un, unfortunately, I can't remember the other processes, but he tried. He, they had, they, they, they worked. Uh, I don't know how many processes they worked. Uh, um, as they called it, snap people out of their body, their heads, and uh, that's what happened. So that's my story. That's a good story. You brought in a couple of great names, like uh, these are famous people. That so, if anybody listening doesn't know, but uh, Ray and Pam Kemp are uh, very famous people in Scientology history. We've got information about them on the Scientology website, and uh, so anyway, that's a great story, Ant. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, very nice. Do you want to share anything along those types of lines, uh, Jim? <laughs> not it's, in actual fact, I'm not very interested in uh, exteriorization. So. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it, fine. It's rather dull. Well, you, <laughs> it happens uh, quite frequently mm. in auditing. I, I, it happened <laughs> like on the like on the grades lower. It, I mean, it often happens on objective processes. In fact, there's a lot of objective processes that you can, you, the end phenomena is exteriorization. Uh, I had one process I remember on grade three and uh, it's hap it was kind of expanding out your viewpoint and, and all of a sudden I was, uh, I found myself outside the physical universe. Mm -hmm. That was on <laughs> the lower grades. 
I mean, mm-hmm. that still was uh, that that was and it was stable for quite a while, actually. And um, like, wow, holy mackerel. Didn't expect that to happen. I mean, things like that happen. Yeah, that's true. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't the, it wasn't just out of the body. I mean, it was out of the universe, man. <laughs> that's wild. Well, a lot of yeah. us old timers do remember when you used to, the first thing you did was uh, something called TRs or training routines, and people would sure. come in and they'd sit down and do these TRs. And son of a gun, if they weren't going exterior left and right, and all the people that talk about going exterior just doing these, it's not even auditing. It's a, a training drill that you do. Uh, they're still available, but I don't think the church does them. At least not as an introductory matter, they don't uh, do them anymore. But, uh, yeah, a lot of wild experiences of people. And that's what you'd hear. You know, people wouldn't be shy about saying that sort of thing, you know, on break or after course or whatnot. You'd be talking to somebody, oh, yeah, I was doing TR0 and I went out of my head, blah, blah, blah. And people were, were, you know, it was very common. You know, it was like that's just going back to how the environment has changed. People don't want to talk about that. Um, so do you it's have a valid, any, uh, it's a valid phenomenon just to wrap up here did you was there anything else that we didn't touch on that you had uh, you know s- some ideas that we should hey, well you know we, we have talked quite a bit about a lot of things but I, if people want to do on their own study uh, and want to enjoy Hubbard uh, actually exteriorizing them uh you can probably you can study some of these ACCs, the advanced clinical courses. Uh, um, they're you know like ACC one and two have like seventy and eighty tapes. Uh, so there's a lot there. But on, on starting at ACC three and four, he does a lot of group auditing. So you can, if you just want to, you know, sit down and listen to Hubbard. Uh, and you want to go for a ride, you might say. Uh, I'd say break <laughs> up, break open your tapes, and uh, you you can get them off your site, right? Uh, uh, well, is, we have the streaming. Right? I was, yeah, we have the live. We have streaming. We can download them or you can stream them. Yeah, at site ACC three, ACC three. I think he has about twenty processes. Uh, he does on groups. ACC four. He does about I think twenty, thirty processes. They're amazing. Hilarious. I mean, just really excellent. Hubbard was in good form back then. He he was trying to see, is there a way to clear this planet uh, in groups? Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, he could get them exterior. Uh, but the case, he did kind of find out that certain aspects of the case had to be handled to, to keep the case stable. Yeah. Well, just for fun, I think as a... Uh, we're going to exit with, um, I'm going to play uh, LRH giving a, a handful of exteriorization processes that people can take away from this. And then uh, we'll just, from there, we'll just go right into our uh, exit music and say adios to everybody. So, uh, Jim, I want to thank you for joining in on this uh, podcast. Uh, your insight, your experience is very, um, very much appreciated. We'll have to do it again. We'll do, uh, we'll kick I this agree. Around. I enjoyed it. All right. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. It was fun. And uh, I want to thank everybody. I'll, I'll put links to all of these things we talked about. And uh, some of these references uh, will be at the end of this uh, video and on the web page that uh, will be up for this podcast. So here's L. Ron Hubbard discussing some uh, exteriorization processes. One of the early mechanisms of exteriorization was simply to get the guy to change his ideas in this fashion. I can control this body. I can't control this body. I can control this body. I can't control this body. I can control this body. Just get him to run those two alternately, one after the other, and blong, he'll go out of his head. Of course, he'll come back in, too. People who've never been out of their heads will go out on that one. The task in Scientology today, however, is not getting people out of their heads. You could exteriorize yourself simply by grabbing your head with your two hands and keeping your head from going away. You go out of your head. I mean, it's as easy as that. 
Now, if you want to be a little more definite about it, why, grab hold of your knees and grab hold of your head. And keep your knees from going away, keep your head from going away, keep your knees from going away, keep your head from going away, keep your knees from going away, keep your head from going away. That's just shift your attention so that you won't get too fixated. I don't know how many hours you might spend at it, but uh, in the final analysis, you would go out of your head, that's for sure. Zong. Now, how good your perception would be, that's another question. How willing are you to see, look? You might go out of your head and just be totally lost and dumbfounded. Well, there'd be nothing wrong with that either, as far as that's concerned. But uh, any phenomena which occurs beyond the point of willingness to be out of the head or control a body from a distance is regulated by the scarcity and abundance of bodies and universes. And if you can't see your body, then there's a scarcity of them. And if you can't see the universe, then there's a scarcity of that. And that's all there is to that. As far as getting somebody out of his head is concerned, this is uh, almost a kid trick now. The earliest technique on this still works. Try not to be three feet back of your head. You're allowed to be there. It still works. About 50% of the population gets three feet back of their heads simply by being told to be three feet back of their heads. They can't help themselves because somebody else can always exteriorize a person more easily than he himself can. Obviously, he has been overwhelmed so often by other determinism that it is more effective upon him than his own. So an auditor walking up to somebody saying, be three feet back of your head, is very likely to pull it off. Very likely to pull it off. It's other direction. The person really wouldn't even have to know what the auditor was talking about to obey this command at once. That's because on the whole track, the adventures of a Thetan include being banged out of many heads. Here's exterior. Keep your head from going away. Take your hands, hold on to your head, and keep them going away. There you go. <laughs> I don't know how many hours it'd take with some preclears. Probably a black five would have to sweat along at this 15 or 20 hours before he really was there. Uh, but uh, he would get there on that one technique. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Uh, now, that's what we call advance. There are probably about 5,000 other techniques, some of them quite unreliable, some of them pretty good, some of them fair. And this is the only shotgun one that I know, the one that doesn't ever fail. It's only contingent upon one thing, being able to take care, take hold of your head. <laughs> that is a necessary uh, prerequisite to that technique. All right. Thank you very much for joining this recent podcast on the subject of exteriorization. Never gets, never gets old. But go to our website, scientology.org, follow us on Facebook, go to our YouTube channel, and by all means, get out of your head. <laughs> Bye. This is Dave LaCroix. <laughs>